This video is sponsored by Milanote. Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in my last behind the scenes, I used some budget-friendly gear to create beautiful portraits, but a lot of you mentioned that the lighting wasn't so cheap. So for today, I decided to use my cheapest, oldest lighting. This Canon 430EX Mark II Speedlight. It's the only light source I will be using today, and you can find it used on eBay for around $50-$60. Super, super affordable. And for the gear, just like last time, I have Canon an EOS RP and the EF 50mm 1.8 Mark II lens, the classic nifty 50 with the EF to R Canon adapter. Total value of the gear is around $1100. The first day I spent just trying things out, testing the light and different concepts for the shoot. I have only used this flash for weddings years ago. I've never used it for a studio portrait session, so it was fun and challenging to try and make it work. I finally figured out what works and what doesn't, so the next day I started planning out the concept for my self-portraits. Recently, I have been using Milanote for mood boards and brainstorming, so I was super excited when they actually reached out and wanted to sponsor today's video. Milanote is kind of like a virtual board where you can pin notes, links, photos, to-do lists. You can get super creative but organized at the same time. And for someone like me that really needs some structure but also is a very visual person, it's just perfect. So I made a board with a bunch of inspiration inspirational photos for this shoot. Uh, a lot of these are by Annie Leibovitz and I was really inspired by her color palette, rich blue and green tones. I really wanted to create very expensive looking pictures with this cheap setup. I also added a note here with some pointers and that was my simple inspo board. But you can do so much more on Milanote. You can create boards that are perfect to share with your team, makeup artist, stylist, send them to modeling agencies as a call sheet or share ideas and brainstorm with your clients. Like this one where I have lots of inspo pictures, a few basic instructions for the model, time and date and address of the photo shoot. You can even insert a map link of the address here, which is super cool. I have links and information about the team and you can also create boards within boards. So I added here a separate one for makeup inspiration. Now to share, I can send a link or even allow for comments and reactions, or I can also save it as a PDF. All of these boards I created myself, but they have tons of awesome, modern, and just good looking templates for photographers and other creatives. I think Milanode really makes it easy and fun to plan out the shoots, plus it makes you look a lot more professional in front of your clients. I really love it, and if you want to try it out as well, you can sign up for free using the link in the description. All right, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of my setup. By the way, it is extremely messy because I was shooting here all day yesterday trying to figure out the look that I was going for and the light that was the most pleasing using just this. Here is <laughs> the, the star of the video. It's my old, old flash. This is Canon uh, 430EX Mark II. This speed light I bought it. This was my first speed light that I ever bought like years and years ago. I don't know, even like maybe seven or eight years ago, I bought the Speedlight. I looked it up and you can buy it on eBay right now for like 50 up to $100. I even saw some listings for $30. So like, this is a really, really cheap Speedlight, but really any Speedlight will work, any Speedlight that you have. Now, I'm using it on my camera. So we're gonna be using on camera flash because that way it is the cheapest way that you can use some kind of light. We don't need any receivers, any transmitters. So in my opinion, this was like the cheapest, the most budget friendly gear that I personally had and I could come up with. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be using today. Now I'm, I'm gonna be taking self portraits because we're back into lockdown and uh, you know, I don't wanna risk it with models. So I'm just taking pictures of myself today. Now, I have to actually mount my camera a little bit backwards on the tripod because of the way the speed light rotates. It can rotate 
360. So I'm gonna mount it on this tripod. By the way, a lot of people ask me about what tripod I use. Honestly, I barely use it for like pictures. So it's not some kind of expensive, amazing tripod. This is, it's called, it's Silk AMT. I don't know, honestly, it doesn't matter what tripod you're using. Just make sure it's a stable one. So this is how I'm mounting my camera and the way I'm going to be using the speed light is pretty much by bouncing the light off of different surfaces in this room. So by playing around a lot yesterday, I figured out that the best way to do it was to actually bounce it off of this back um, window that I have here. So as you can see, the window is pretty big and it has the white uh, blinds and so it acts almost like as a huge nice soft box so by positioning the speed light this way we're gonna have the light going this way and then bounce it back onto me and again it will create really really nice soft light now if I position it slightly this way it wouldn't have worked as well because this whole wood panel is darker it absorbs light more than it reflects it but if I'm bouncing it off this corner for example it is gray and white and it reflects the light a lot better so i'm positioning again slightly upwards this way or if i want to change it up just a little bit i usually just move the flash slightly this way into the corner and that way you will get more of a side light rather than the light going straight onto me so this is how i'm going to be using the flash so throughout the shoot i might be just kind of changing the position just a little bit depending if i want full front light or if i want more dramatic side light i actually most most of my pictures i shot with this kind of slightly more dramatic uh side light now i'm using a fan here <laughs> again this is just a cheap fan that we bought a long long time ago but it works really great and it will be creating a lot of movement into my hair and now uh, because I'm taking self-portraits I'm gonna be using my phone and connecting the camera to the phone through a Canon camera connect app so I can control everything through my screen set the focus on my face through the screen and then take a picture through it as well. I mounted it on this cheap stand. I bought the stand from Amazon as the clip and I will try to list all of these in uh, the description of the video. So if you want any of the gear that I'm using, check out the links. Now, finally for the bag drop. So I'm using my Kate bag drops. I really love these collapsible ones because they are very nice and flat and they're cheap as well. So these are I think a hundred dollars these collapsible or 120 something like that and I have 10% off for these backdrops so check out the link and then again the stand itself uh, again you don't need some kind of expensive stand you can buy something on Amazon for like a hundred dollars you don't need to even buy the stand you could also prop this to the wall if you really wanted to I am using a stand because there's no wall to prop it to but yeah this is my little setup that I'm gonna be using today and yeah, the images come out really, really nice. So let's start shooting. For the first look, I decided to wear this silky pink dress. Any shiny fabric always looks great in pictures and gives off that luxurious vibe. Just make sure that you steam the garment before you use it in the photo shoot so that it doesn't show any of the creases. And to make it a bit more interesting, I added a fake orchid flower. It helps to pose around it and it just looks good. Flowers are always a great prop. I really wanted to take some portraits of me just kind of uh, resting on the table because you can come up with more poses that way. And to create this table, I used, let me show you. So this is another backdrop, but this is just a fabric backdrop and it's very, very similar color to this, um, this one. So I thought that it's gonna be perfect. Now, underneath here, <laughs> If you guys remember, this is a board from my food photography video. I made this board a long, long time ago. 
and then underneath it there is a little uh, coffee no this is not a coffee table it's almost like a plant holder or just like a little uh, stand and uh, I bought that stand from Value Village a long time ago for maybe like ten dollars maybe even less something like five dollars so this is my makeshift little table that matches the backdrop and I have the fan on going to kind of you know get my hair a little bit messy and I'm gonna be holding this fake yellow orchid yellow will contrast really nicely with the green and the blue dress that I have and yeah I'm just gonna start shooting and I'm using the kind of more contrasty light with pointing the flash just slightly into the left side uh, of the room just to give me some shadow on this side, a nice light on here, just to make it more dramatic. Now with this next look, I really just wanted to experiment with crazy clothing and accessories, something very different for me. And I think it came out pretty cool. Let me know what you think. For the last look, I wore a fully red outfit. I think these really rich, solid colors look very expensive and it contrasted really nicely with the green backdrop. So the first step I did in editing was applied a preset that I made in Camera Raw. This preset gave an overall cooler tone to the image. I put a lot of blues in the shadows and some greens in the highlights. Then I worked on the skin with the dodge and burn. And then I did a little bit of color matching on some of the areas of my skin. Then I did some more dodge and burn for the overall image. So pretty much making some of the highlights uh, more high highlighted and some of the shadows darker just to kind of make the image pop and then finally I did a little bit more of color correction pretty much changing the pink dress into an orange color to give that very pleasing orange and teal effect pretty much if you look at the color wheel the cyans and oranges are on the opposite sides which means that they are complementary and very pleasing to the eye. I do like the pink as well. It does also fit within the color wheel and is also very pleasing to the eye, but in my opinion, the orange looks better. But here is the pink, if you guys wanna see it. So let me know which one you like better, pink or orange. Again, you know that I prefer the orange, but let me know which one is your favorite. Alright, so this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the pictures. Give this video a like if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!